You'll recall that in our last sailing video, we just successfully installed the center plate. The following day, I went out and tested this with my father and it worked pretty well. However, the next time I went out on the boat with SJ, well, this happened. It's about 3 p.m. Uh, the sun is getting lower. And as you can see from the engine at the back, something isn't quite right. So we're not entirely sure what's happened, but um, the pull cord basically seized up and wouldn't retract. I've taken the cowling off. I've, uh, I have managed tried to retract it and start the motor. Um, for one reason or another, it defeated us. And, um, as a result, we are... <laughs> we don't have a motor. Well, we're under sail. And... We're under sail in very little wind, making very low, or very slow headway back to the mouth of the river. And, um, yeah, it's a little bit of a headache. Bird thing under sail is a pain in the bum. And um, with so little wind, It'll be dark before we get back. It'll be dark before we even get even partly up the river. So what followed was a series of phone calls to uh, people we know, sailors we know. Um, we went also then started calling um, Sea Rescue. And it's uh, not actually their area. They have a radio machine uh, up this part. This is Coast Guard territory, apparently. So we then made a few calls to the Coast Guard. Um, we're obviously not in any immediate danger, but given we're about to enter a shipping channel and we don't know much wind, the maneuverability of this vessel is, uh, well, quite a bit questionable without that. Um, we gave them another call and hopefully they're going to come out, as they put it, for a bit of training. Uh, it's going to be a bit of training for us as well, because obviously we haven't been in this position before. So. Yeah, it wasn't quite what we planned on doing today, but uh, there you go, sailing, and this is what happens when your engine doesn't work. Um, yeah, so it's going to be interesting how this all turns out, whether we get back before the sun goes down, I somewhat doubt it. Stay tuned. So as you can see, we're moving now, not under our power, we have a little help from the Coast Guard who are towing us. Hang on. We're certainly moving faster than we normally do. And um, Sarah's just sent a picture to her parents. And um, I think her dad's re response was chalk another one to Uncle Albert. If you don't understand the reference, it's uh, from Only Fools and Ho Horses. Only Fools and Horses, a British comedy, in which case the, uh, the, the um, <laughs> Uncle Albert. Uncle Albert, apparently every should be sunk on, sorry, <laughs> every should be served on, sunk. During the war, we pursued a German battleship down the eastern coast, and right the way through the Zanzibar Channel. Three days and nights we chased it. Did you catch it? Yeah, worse luck, it sunk us. Now we have the sun, and I'm glad we have the sun, but uh, every time we go out, we got this uh, reference to Uncle Albert. You're gonna and, forever uh, get it now. <laughs> so, uh, I'm just relieved to be heading back. Yeah, we're heading back. It's still gonna be pretty late by the time we get there. I, I've got no idea how we're actually gonna go alongside. So we're just gonna have a load of ropes ready to go. Uh, Bender's ready to go. Oh yes, and, and just to watch the entertainment, my father's coming out with his fishing friend. And they're going to have some entertainment as well at our expense, no doubt. <laughs> Happy days. We're about to come alongside with the Coast Guard. I'm not actually sure how we're going to do this. So I'm sort of covering all bases. I've put out uh, two springs, one on each side. And I've also got two stern lines ready to go. I've dropped the guardrail, which is what we normally do, because we normally come alongside our port side and the bow line is there but if we need to bring it around the other side all well and good so we've got a few options we've got three fenders there one fender there uh, i'm sure they've done this before quite a few times but uh, needless to say we're 
just have to do this the best we can. Normally we have a plan, we're going, we, we have a routine what we do, but this is all very new, so I'm expected to see my father waving to us very shortly as we go past him. Well, I was laughing. Him and his fishing mate have come down just, just to, I, I think just to have a laugh, to be honest, at our misfortune, but um, they, were, they were potentially going to come out and uh, assist us if we needed it. Um, we've got some assistance, but they'll have a good laugh and something to talk about on the way home. And we're back in safely. Uh, good timing because it's starting to get dark. It's a lovely evening. And I think it was a good call because you can see there's no wind, none at all. So if we were on the shipping channel at the moment under sail, we would have just been drifting. And at best we would have found a place to anchor. At worst we would have been just drifting in the shipping channel and with ships coming in and out, it's not the best thing to do. So good call getting the Coast Guard. They were fantastic. They helped us get in. We didn't film during that because we were a bit busy at the time. The Coast Guard you can donate to, which we will do as a result. Uh, really appreciate their help today, really professional. And as you can see, no damage to the boat at all. The only issue is, uh, is the engine, but uh, I don't think that's a big issue either. That's just something we've got to get serviced, which I'll do. Uh, and maybe my pride, well not even that really to be honest, but my father was uh, watching us as we came in, having a good chuckle at our expense but them's the breaks, things are going to happen, things are going to break. I'm down the club for the first time in two weeks. The last time being when we were towed in by the Coast Guard. Um, we haven't been able to come down here because of the lockdown and uh, unfortunately, as I say, that engine has been sitting on the boat. It hasn't been able to be rinsed because it is jammed and it needs to be serviced. That's what I'm down here for today, to take it off and uh, take it to the shop. And in the last two weeks, we've had terrible weather, really bad. So that's never really presented a problem before. The boat's been pretty good at withstanding it. And there's, um, um, I don't think the rain would have got in it or anything like that, but uh, you never know, do you? So I'm going to go and check it out first and then we're going to try and take the engine off the boat, which is going to be a barrel of laughs. Looks good so far. Ah. Bugger. Solar panel has blown off there. Um, I might be able to get that, that back on. As far as the boat goes, that all looks okay inside, so that's a relief. Might just go down and double check. Okay, there is a little bit of water in the bilge. And the question is why? Why is there water in there? It could be rain that's got through somehow. Or it could be something else. I don't know. That is a little bit worrying. I've uh, dried it out. So there's no more water slopping around in there. And I guess we'll see if it comes back. I'm hoping that it's something to do with the rain that somehow, with the bad weather, um, the water's just gone in there from somewhere. I'm not, I'm not sure what other parts of the boat could possibly um, link up to that. Perhaps somewhere from the cockpit, I don't know. But um, I guess we'll know soon enough if water starts coming up through the bottom whether we've got a significant problem or not. Fingers crossed, eh? Now, I don't know if there's any easy way of doing this, but uh, it's gonna be a bit of muscle, basically, I think. We'll just loosen this off. And then we'll just pull it into the cockpit. I actually think it's just gonna be as simple as that, or as difficult as that, because this thing is not gonna be super light, unfortunately. Um, all right. Let's Let 
drop it down. That's the side it needs to rest in the car. engine any bigger than this. Just fit it in. That was not an easy thing to do at all but if it was any bigger at all or if it was a diesel motor well we couldn't get it off so it's about as easy as it gets it's probably just about the biggest motor we would want to get for this boat uh, it's in the car now we're gonna go and try and drop it off and get it fixed just drop the motor off and it looks like it's a starter spring or like a, a recoil spring that's what it was uh, that's broken, so that needs to be fixed. Gonna get a service, and I think we're gonna be looking at somewhere in the realm of 450 to 550 uh, in terms of how much money I'm paying. That's more than a car service, but uh, it is what it is. It certainly needs it, and we need a motor. So, this is interesting. It's dry. Now, I have a theory. This hose is what contains the wire right notice where it goes to the top of that and the winch is there now see that hole i removed a piece of tape from it and i wonder i wonder if the water has gone down there and there's been some residue and of course it's going to gather and somehow that's where it came from Obviously, I'm pretty encouraged that there's, uh, it's dry today. Um, tends to suggest we haven't got a major problem. I seriously thought there was going to be a fair bit of water in that today because yesterday I left it for a while, came back, and it was wet still. So it might be that we don't have an issue. So now I've got to put the solar that came off there. In fact, you can still see part part of the, the uh, solar frame on there that is stuck oxidized on i guess i can't get that off that actually came from there i think so this is not a particularly hard metal it's very soft um i'm going to do a makeshift sort of job on this i'm going to put some washers behind it and it should hold it but it might need a more permanent plan down the track so i'm going to put that uh, back on here a bit fiddly but i should be able to do it okay find the holes on there on there and 
it's the medium size washer that I'm gonna have to use. The other one, the bigger one that I wanted to use is too big. So I'm gonna put that on there. Initially, yep, that fits. Part of the issue with these nuts, they are too small. It will go right through a hole. I think that's what happened on the other side. And I'll try not to let this drop in the water. That would be bad. Um, as I say, it's very fiddly. Tighten that up with a spanner in a moment, but for the moment, just finger tight. It's very hard to get in there, so we needed the right spanner. I need a few turns on it, and that will be much more secure. It's kind of one of the things I really like, the um, social aspect of this club. It's um, such a strange time in the world. Um, you can come down into the club, the yachties are very down to earth. You know, I think we all really enjoy just getting away from things, getting out on the water. Simple, just simple times really. We got our outboard back from the engine shop where we bought it. Oh, we didn't buy it. The guy who bought it got it from there. And it's been serviced and it's been fixed. So, what was wrong with it, SJ? Potentially it was a missing or a loose pin in the real recall assembly. Yeah, I, I might have broken. got it slightly wrong, but essentially, um, you can probably remember the uh, starter cord was kind of just jammed, it was dangling, there was a pin that was mis missing, well, it came out, it hadn't even broken. Um, I can't picture exactly where it was, but it was a simple fix. Um, did that did the service importantly also showed me the engine and show me what you can do to get it going again because we could have all you got to do is remove the cowling and then there's a further assembly on top of um, the engine which is basically where that the the recall assembly and the spring is for the for the starter cord that can be removed and then all you have to do is put one of these this is a spare one around it in a clockwise direction and pull and Bob's your auntie so we could have actually started it Anyway, we've got it back. We're going to put it back on the boat. Ah, oh, I made a real pickle of getting it off. It's not light, and um, I'm doing it by myself. So what I'm going to do is use the trolley again. Make sure these are nice and loose. Struggle with it onto the trolley. So we'll he, does, he doesn't trust me, so he'd rather me record than lift it. Oh, no, no, I'm happy for you. To, <laughs> we have a tripod for a reason, but it, it isn't light. Ugh. And it's greasy. And it's greasy, which is good, but messy. I wonder if there's anything that doesn't have grease on here. Anyway, I don't think there's going to be a particularly no. easy way of doing it. Oh dear. Well, I can stop videoing and come and help. That's all right, I'm the, uh, by the time we do that, I managed to get it off and um, I managed to get it on. Getting on the boat is a little bit more of a headache. into the water. He needs a license to drive the trolley. It's running now. 
let it run for a moment. It sounds better than it used to. It's not as noisy. Oh, my God. 